Hi, I'm Dave Boyd with the Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm and Portable Sawmill. And I wanted to talk with you a little bit about what to look for in a sawmill. If you're just starting out and maybe looking for something that's not high level, but you still want something that'll work for you and be reliable and give you good cuts. Now, maybe you've looked through the manufacturer's literature, advertisements, brochures, maybe even some YouTube videos, wound up being more confused than you were when you started. Well, I've been there and I've done that. I started out sawmilling oh, about 40 years ago. I worked out with a circle sawmill. And sawmills have come a long way since the old circle mills. And believe me, they've changed for the better. Modern band saw mills are cheaper, easier to use, quieter, safer, and a lot more efficient than the old style circle mills were. All of this has put band saw mills within easy reach of anybody who wants to cut their own lumber. I bought my first band saw mill about 14 years ago, and I'm on my third machine now, so I've seen a lot of the good and bad and what it takes to make a top notch machine, so hopefully uh, some of my experience will be useful to you. Here are some of the points that should help you find the machine that will work best for you. An entry level bandsaw machine, black, a lot of the bells and whistles of the larger counterparts, but the best ones are built to run just as reliably and are just as rugged as the bigger mills. Entry level mills are manual, that is, you'll have to turn the log, clamp it, and push the blade through by hand. But it's easier than you think and it'll save you a bundle, plus it'll keep you in shape. So let's look at some of the features to consider when you're looking for an entry-level bandsaw mill. Cheaply built mills skimp on the materials and they're more lightly built. You should be able to push against the mill and feel it just rock solid. That means it won't shake or shimmy when you're cutting your wood. To get a straight, consistent cut, you can't beat laminate construction with overlapping metal plates holding the saw head steady. An entry-level doesn't have to mean small. It should be able to handle a 26 inch diameter log so you can cut real logs, not just fence post material. And it should have some of the same features as a full size sawmill. Roller guides put just enough force to keep the blade going straight through the cut. The auto locking mechanism lets you set the precise blade height and it holds it there, all in one motion. Building a safe machine that meets international standards is no small task, but it means that you're working with the safest machine possible. All safety features should be effective, yet out of the way when you're operating the machine. Automatic return to idle with a centrifugal clutch idles down the engine and lets the blade coast to a stop whenever you take your hand off the control to offload boards or turn the log. Paint or powder coat. This is one place where you should not compromise to save a few bucks. Paint is cheap, but it fades, cracks, and peels with time. Durable powder coating and galvanized parts protect your investment and keep it looking good. Any sawmill needs to be able to take a beating. Heavy-duty parts such as a well-designed track, 19-inch band wheels, and a reliable engine to help make sure you spend your time making sawdust instead of repairing the mill. Entry-level sawmills should come with everything you need so that you don't have to buy any extras just to make it work. On the other hand, it's great if they do have some extra options available, either when you buy the mill or to be able to add to them later as you can afford it and as you see the need for it. For example, extra tracks so you can mill longer timbers or even a towing package so you can haul it on site if you need to. Find out what's available before you buy your sawmill. Consider the advantages of putting your sawmill together from a kit. This keeps the cost down because it's easy to ship on pallets and you're not paying someone else to build the mill for you. A well-designed mill is easy to assemble and you'll have a good working knowledge of the machine before you start it up. And what about service after you buy it? If you purchase your sawmill from a reliable company with a good solid reputation and is backed by a service department and technicians that no saw milling inside and out. And speaking of service, does the mill come with at least a one year warranty? It should. So do your homework. Get a good solid machine, one that's got a good reputation, that's re built reliably, has the extras that you need as you need them, has at least a one year warranty,
and it has service backed by a company as solid as a 12 by 12 white oak beam. 